The story begins with a man named Arthur Bishab, who lived in his boat on the seashore. One day he woke up in the morning, and after drinking coffee came out of the boat. That's why he started a bomb fitted in the boat, so that no one could steal his boat. Then he reached a restaurant on his bike, everyone there already knew him, and the waiter made him sit on a place near the sea. Then a girl came and sat in front of him, and started saying that she has been looking for him for a long time. The girl said that her boss wants Bishab to kill three people. But it should appear that his death was just an accident. She knew that this task was not difficult for Bishab as he was an old player of this game. The girl threatened him that if he did not say yes, she would inform the police. She will inform everyone that Bishab is alive, because last time he had escaped from the police by faking his death. Only then Bishab saw that there were some other people with this girl, who were watching only her. Suddenly he took out his phone and took a picture of that girl. As the girl tried to take out the gun, Bishab attacked her. Seeing this, the girl's companions also broke down on Bishab, but he licked everyone one by one. Then Bishab saw more goons coming from below to catch him, so he jumped off the wall, hanging onto a cable car. The girl followed Bishab with her companions, and entered the cable car. She was looking for Bishab inside, but he was on the terrace. The girl fired a gun at the ceiling, but Rishab jumped at the last moment, and fell on a parachute. When he started going to his boat at night, he saw that two people were already there. He took out his phone without losing time, and blasted the boat. After that he reached the loading and unloading point, opened a box and burned his passports and other papers. Then Bishab went to an island in Thailand, where he met a girl he already knew. This girl was the owner of a hotel there, she took him to a room and Bishab took out a bag from a secret place. There were many phones, weapons and passports in it. He found out some information about the girl in the picture, then came to know that in reality this girl works for a man named Crane. On the other side, a girl named Gina met the owner of the hotel, and asked her for something. The mistress saw several wounds on his arm, as if someone had beaten him badly. The mistress tried to help her further, but Gina said she only needed the medicines, and then left. At night the mistress saw a board in the sea, in which some man was beating a girl. He immediately went to Bishab and asked him to help the girl. By obeying Bishab reached that boat, that girl was none other than Gina. But the man did not listen to Bishab, and took out his gun. For this mistake Bishab killed him after washing him a lot. After this he asked the mistress to take Zena to the hotel. Then when he searched the boat, he found Zena's passport and phone, which had Bishab's picture on it. Eventually he blew up the boat, and came back to the hotel. He asked Zena, what is her picture doing in Zena's phone? He clearly asked Zena, does she also work for the crane? Zena told in a scared voice that the crane was threatening her. Whatever happened till now was part of the crane's plan, so that Gina could meet Bishab. Bishab discovers that Gina fosters orphans who were being trafficked. The crane threatened Gina that if she did not obey him, he would kill her children. Bishab saw a boat moving towards the island, in which there were many men, who were keeping an eye on the island. Bishab said to Gina, Look you have to pretend to be friends with me, so that the crane does not get suspicious. She did so, and Bishab apologized to her for dragging him into all this. But he had no choice but to do so. Bishab told that he was happy to know that she takes care of orphans, as he himself was an orphan. As a child, he and Crane were bought by a gangster, Bishab managed to escape from his clutches but Crane could not. So he punished the Crane considering him guilty, and since then the Crane hates Bishab. Well Bishab made a plan to get Gina out of this trouble, and gave his watch as a token. The next day Crane's men kidnap Gina, then Bishab calls Crane and challenges him to do two hands. But when Bishab met Crane, he asked him to release Zena, but Crane told Bishab that for this you will have to commit three murders. It's the first man. A goon from Africa, who is imprisoned in the world's most dangerous jail. Then the Crane asked him to swallow a GPS tracker so that his men could reach Bishab when the job was done. When Bishab asked for proof that Gina was alive, the Crane said that after completing each mission, he could talk to Gina on the phone. And after all three missions are completed, Gina will be released. Now Bishab has started his. He came to know that the prison was in the middle of the sea, which was full of sharks. And there were hundred meters tall mountains around the prison. That's why it was almost impossible to enter that prison. After this Bishab took out the information of some gangsters, and chose a man who had a tattoo on his face. He disguised as the same man, and then bought the supplies needed for the mission. The next day when he was roaming on the road, the police, mistaking him for a gangster, arrested him and put him in jail. In the jail, he saw that his victim used to take four or five people with him all the time. He is then told by a fellow prisoner, that this man's name is Krill, and that he murdered the president of the country of Libreria. By now several prisoners had tried to kill Krill. When Krill is attacked again, this time Bashab saves his life. 
Creel thanks him and invites him to dinner. When Bishab went to meet him, he took Creel's life, and everyone thought that he died because of eating poison food. Then Bishab immediately blasted the wall of the prison and sprayed such a spray all over his body so that the shark would not come near him. Finally, he took out the GPS capsules and jumped into the sea. On the other hand, a message came to the captain of the boat that Bishab has completed the work. After finding his location, the men of the crane rescued him. Then Bishab talks to Zena on the phone. Then Zena tells that Bishab has only 36 hours to kill the next man. Otherwise, those people will kill Zena. Now the crane sent him the information of another man. This man's name is Adian, who was a billionaire. He does the business of human trafficking, but it was very difficult to reach him because he lives on the 58th floor of a building in Australia, where all the walls, doors, windows were bulletproof. On top of that, sensors and fingerprint devices were also installed everywhere. Now Bishab has come to buy the house below this man. There he copied the keys of the house and the map exactly. Then he made glass shattering bombs and disguised himself as a cleaning man, entered the house. Hanging from the window of the house, he reached the swimming pool of Adian's house and fitted bombs there. As soon as Adian came to bathe in it, the Bishab blew up and Adian fell straight down and was killed. Now again Zena's call came, but this time she cleverly showed the number of the boat in which she was imprisoned. Then Bishab reached that boat by helicopter to save Zena and killed many goons. But alas, he was caught after some time. Then the crane gave her the last warning and said, "I forgive this time, but if this happens again, Zena will be killed, and you are responsible for his death." Now Bishab's last mission was to kill Max living in America. He was hiding in a building that is built on top of a mountain, and there was a Samarine factory. Big missiles were hidden in these Samarine. There secretly, it was impossible for anyone to come in or go out from inside. Whoever tries there, he would fall in the face of death. Bishab had 48 hours to complete the task. He got the news that Max has called for a helicopter, so he made a plan to reach Max by hiding under the helicopter. When his plan was successful, he jammed all the cameras in the building. There was a stir all around, and the guards started taking Max to a special room. Then Bishab blasted the lift, but somehow Max reaches the special room. Although Bishab was already present there, now he teamed up with Max and pretended to kill Max, so that the crane could be dodged. His plan was that when the men of the crane come to find Max's dead body. The crane would be alone in the boat, and it is not a big deal to end it at that time. They pretended to kill Max as per the plan, and as soon as there was an explosion, Bishab brought him to an island after saving him from the ocean. Then Bishab called the crane and said that now you leave Zena, but the crane demanded to see Max's dead body first. Bishab told that the dead body was lying in a submarine. Crane then sends his men to look for Max's body on the submarine. Bishab had also prepared for them by planting bombs everywhere. As soon as his men reached there, Bishop fired them with bullets. On the other side, the crane saw all this with its cameras. After that, Bishab reached the crane boat and killed all the guards. Meanwhile, Zena also got shot. The same crane activated the bomb in the boat. Bishab quickly rescues Zena and transports her in one such box. The one who got separated from the boat even before the explosion now started a fierce fight between Bishab and the crane. He tied the crane with a chain, and only then the boat exploded. While Zena escaped. Max's men took out the wreckage of the boat. After some time, Zena was with her children, and she saw that Bishab was standing before her eyes. Actually, Bishab was hiding in the steel room of the boat, which is useful during emergency, and thus he survived the blast. And this movie ends here.